Um, okay, so all of the conditionals we're going to look at, and we're going to look at some typical mistakes and why we use these different conditionals. They can be quite difficult, and this isn't everything. I'll talk about that as we go along, but it is 90% of what you... Well, I think it's all you need to know, really. Um, but there are some minor details which this is perhaps missing. Um, so, zero conditional. It always follows this formula. If present, present. Um, it's quite easy for students, and so I haven't got any typical mistakes here. It's used for always true statements. So, scientific laws. If water reaches 100 degrees Celsius, it boils. Um, and it's also used for things which are always true. So machines always do the same thing. If you press this button, the machine gives you coffee. Always. Not once. Not one moment in the future, but always. First conditional refers to one possibility in the future. And it is a real possibility. What I mean by real is it's likely to happen. Okay? Um, it follows the formula if and present tense... Any present tense, by the way, present simple, present continuous, or present perfect, and will or won't plus the first form. However, we can use a modal verb here instead of will or won't, that's why I've written modal, can, might, may, should, and we can use an imperative instead of will or won't. Imperatives are orders, like go, stop, wait, come, these are all orders. So we can use those instead of will or won't. You'll see on my last example here, call the doctor if you feel sick. Okay? Um, you could also use going to instead of will or won't. So really, perhaps it's better to say future here um, instead of just uh, will or won't. But we use them for some real possibilities. This is the most typical mistake. If he will, if I will, if it will, if Philip will... It's, they're all wrong. All of those options are wrong. Never say will next to if in the same clause as if. It shouldn't be there. It should only be in the second part, or maybe the first part of the sentence. Because this is a second thing which is confusing for students. We can use this part at the start and this at the end. So we can say if I see him, not will, if I see him, I will tell him. Or we can say I'll tell him if I see him. Now, notice that if I see him, I will tell him has a comma. And we even have a pause when we speak. We say, if I see him, I'll tell him. But if we change the sentence round, we have no comma. And we say, I'll tell him if I see him. We say it very, very fast together. I think it's, you don't hear the pause, and so we don't use the comma. For example here, we'll have a picnic if it's sunny. We'll have a picnic if it's sunny. Yeah, um, we don't have so much of a pause here. We have no comma. Notice we have the will in this part, the first part now, and the if and present in the second part. Okay, um, when I will be, I hear so many students say when I will be, it's wrong. Don't say it. So when I will is also wrong because remember that with first conditional we can use if or we can use when, as soon as, before, after, unless, until, in case. There, I've forgotten another one. In case. Now, um, I'm not going to look at the details of unless and in case. Here is something which I'm missing in this lesson. Um, they can be quite difficult for students to use correctly. Uh, so that will be for a different video, not today. Um, but yes, we can use any of these words instead of if, and still we mustn't use will in their clause. It will be wrong. So when I am 65, I agree it's in the future. I'm not 65 yet. But uh, nonetheless, we use present. When I am 65, I will retire. OK, and the last example is to show you the imperative. Call the doctor if you feel sick. There is no will in this sentence, but it's correct because we're using call the doctor instead of will. We're using an imperative instead of will. We don't have to use will. We can use imperatives. OK, second conditional is for hypothetical present. It's not for real or likely possibilities. For my students, it's like, yes, Libri, it's, it's not real, it's a hypothetical situation. And for present hypotheticals, we use this 
formula. If and pass, would and wouldn't, and the third form, a uh, first form, <laughs> and the first form after would or wouldn't, just like the first form after will or won't. Infinitive is another way of saying for, uh, first form. Um, so if I would, this is the most typical mistake here, it's always wrong. It's not correct because we use if and the past. You cannot put would in the same part as the past. So if I were you, I would resign. This is something else to remember that's very strange, but true, about hypothetical situations such as second and third conditional. We use I were in second and third conditional and you were or were you if I, if I were you. Um, so, oh, sorry, so yeah, if I were, um, but we use I were, you were, he were, she were in second and third conditional. Strange. So let me just, yeah, that's what it is. You need to remember that I, he and she, which is usually was, we can use were in this second conditional. In fact, it sounds better to use were. It sounds like it's better English. So I recommend using were with I, he and she in second and third conditional. I wouldn't do that if I were you. Now, there are some more things that we can use instead of if. We can use providing that. Uh, sounds a bit strange. Providing that I were you, I would resign. Um, so we only use it in certain uh, sentences. It sounds more natural in some sentences and not others. But we can use providing that on condition that as long as supposing... OK, uh, these are also more often in second and third, not so often in thir first, but more in second and third instead of if. OK, so it's not just if that makes a conditional. Um, OK, let's come on to third conditional. This is about the present. This is saying if I were you now, I would resign now. This is about the past. This is if I had been you. <laughs> now, we don't usually say that. This will come on to in mixed conditionals. Um, so it's about past situations. For example, last week, if I had had the money, I would have paid him back yesterday. Yeah, if I had had the money yesterday, I would have paid him back yesterday. Notice that it follows this past perfect and then would have and the third form. OK, if I would again is wrong. Don't say it. It's still if and had had done. Yeah, remember, remind yourself that past perfect is had in the third form. OK, um, so if I had had, this is, I'd had. If I had had the money, I would have paid him back yesterday. If I hadn't arrived late, I wouldn't have been sacked. I hope you remember some of this vocabulary. Um, so if I hadn't arrived late yesterday, I wouldn't have been sacked yesterday. OK, so if this is about hypothetical foot past, this is about hypothetical present, sometimes we could have something hypothetical in the present having past consequences, hypothetical consequences, and the opposite. Sometimes we can have something hypothetical in the past having hypothetical present consequences. Let me show you. And we have two different formulas for this because that's two different uh, types of um, situations. So look at number one. If I hadn't stolen the money three years ago, I wouldn't be in prison now. OK, that is a past situation, a past hypothetical situation, because I did steal the money. If I hadn't stolen the money, I wouldn't be in prison now with present consequences, hypothetical consequences. Um, OK, and number two, it's the opposite now. If I were you... I wouldn't have resigned. We're saying if I were you now, really, we mean if I were you, I wouldn't have resigned last week. OK? Um, so I hope that makes it clear, the uh, mixed conditional part as well. If you have any questions, please leave them under the video. That's all for today uh, about conditionals, but there are other things which can, ha can be said about these forms. For example, I've seen a first... A, a mixed conditional which is first and third. It's very rare, um, so I don't think it's too much to worry about. Mixed conditionals aren't, well, they're pretty common, but then they're, they're not, you don't see them all the time. Still, they're worth learning. Um, so please, ask questions below the video, subscribe if you like the lesson, and uh, I hope to see you soon. Please subscribe if you've enjoyed this lesson and would like to receive more over the next few weeks. Uh, here are some videos on phrasal verbs, auxiliary verbs, tenses, 
and verb forms as well like gerunds and two plus infinitive. Um, please watch them and try the quizzes below the videos and uh, I hope that you improve.